Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to your June reading. So tomorrow, June 3rd, Mercury goes direct in Taurus. So if you're a Scorpio rising, that's right across from you in your house of relationships. It will stay in Taurus for 10 days. And then on June 13th, Mercury will move back into Gemini. And that, if you're a Scorpio rising, is your eighth house. So what that means is Mercury went looking for something that is keeping you stuck in eighth house matters, long-term commitment, marriage, family. And it found something, but it didn't know what to make of it. So it brought it back to Taurus, your axis, and then it ruminated for a while. Now, tomorrow, you will start to get the first inklings that maybe a door has opened. A door to you being able to change your mind about something that I don't think you ever thought you could change your mind about. Time and circumstance may have humbled you. Someone close to you not being around anymore may be the catalyst. A loss of some sort, something that you feel got away, something that might have been gnawing at you for a while, but you couldn't understand why it didn't work. Probably because there was some aspect of you that you couldn't see past. And that's exactly what Mercury went to Gemini to find, brought back to Taurus. And now over the next, let's say 10 days or so, explains to you through all sorts of synchronicities that show up in your simulation. So ultimately, that eight of cups is total freedom for you. It means that you were able to change your mind about something that, whether you realized it or not, was holding you back from being happy. It hasn't been brought to your attention until just now, well, tomorrow. So it's jarring. Yeah, it's a big change. But it speaks directly to this need for emotional stability, uh, closeness and togetherness, happiness between couples, what you need, the emotional security that you need to be able to finally see the stumbling block, to be able to finally see what has been holding you back, what you've been holding on to that's actually been a weight tied to your ankles. This is huge because what it does is it gives you all the building blocks to succeed now because you see exactly where you've been wrong. The only thing, in fact, when your month is going this well in terms of insight, the only thing that can hold you back is denial. Some Scorpio, on principle, just don't learn anything in Gemini season. You're too irritated by our energy to give us credit for being able to teach you something. You can at times treat Gemini season as if you're doing charity work. You're just putting up with us. But you would be remiss if you did that. You would miss out on some very good insight because it's not just the Gemini in your life, it's the season itself that's trying to show you something for your benefit and your benefit only. And I would even argue that perhaps that's the reason the message could be lost on you. Oftentimes, if something is just good for you and for nobody else, it doesn't really hold your attention. But this is just for you. And you may have felt for quite some time now that you want to be better. That you want something different when you're 
very, very old, that you want something more stable and more loving for yourself. Between the 11th and the 19th, it's the perfect time to see the hanged man and the four of pentacles in your life, to get out of your own head. You have the opportunity to really enjoy yourself if you give in to the spirit of the season, which is just to go with things and not and to relinquish all control. What makes Gemini season and Gemini in general so seductive is this embrace of the chaos. To try to control the chaos during the season of chaos is pure futility and, dare I say, tragic. You cannot control this. And the more you try, the worse it'll hurt. What you can do is you can find those bright moments of light within the chaos that make the chaos worthwhile. You ever hang out with a Gemini and things are crazy and then all of a sudden they say something and you're like, that's really fucking smart. Exactly that. That's what's happening now. So you can take it as a season where you're being shown all the different ways in which you're not good enough. You could take it that way if you wanted to, or you could take it as the season where you're being shown what's keeping you from your fullest potential, your highest good, and your highest happiness. If you look at it that way, it's quite a blessing, right? But it's hard to look at that and see the goodness when your pride is in the way. The pride here, when we're talking about Scorpios, is that knowing everything kind of pride. You can't tell me, I already know. And Gemini season, but more so, surprisingly, Cancer season. Remember, Cardinal Water doesn't have a lot of time for you. I've never met Cancers who are overly impressed by Scorpios. They understand you in a way that I don't think anybody else does because they're not afraid of you and everybody else is. So it's going to go from being humbled to being even more humbled, right? As we go from Gemini to Cancer season. But what's so wonderful about that is that the, the humility or this humbling only happens if someone is being obnoxious. If you're going with the flow and you're not trying to control things and you're... <clears throat> You know, you want things to just be copacetic and you're not it, it, kind of it, mm, spreading your opinions all over other people. If you're, just, if you're just doing your thing and going with the flow, this can be a month that rivals any fantasy you've ever had. There can be a lot of new love, a lot of exploration, a lot of risk, a lot of fun things, sexual things that you really like can come to you very easily. But first you have to admit that there is a place in your life for somebody else, right? If you're seeing everybody as someone that you kind of put up with and tolerate, that's an energy that's very palpable to other people. It's easily read. I think June is an interesting month for you because you're starting to see how there is actual room for someone to be in your life and not be a nuisance to you. Now, once you get there, you immediately jump to, well, then I want somebody in my life. And I would be careful there because you do show up in a lot of people's readings this month as the ex that wants to come back, who thinks they're better, but they're not. Right? What I would do is if you would like to make some attempt with someone from the past, go for it. But I would spend most of your time focusing on your network, your friends who are also your associates, your peers, your colleagues. I would network. I would look at jobs. I would get into a space where who I know works for me. <clears throat> I wouldn't pursue anything else right now except how I can further myself in my career. Because the fact is that if that person prompted by you is going to come back, they're going to come back. And if they're not, they're not. 
and you have a tendency to get into some pretty dramatic situations this month if you let your insecurities get the best of you. As soon as you let your insecurities get the best of you, all the drama is going to pour in. You know, then it's like, then it's a weird mix of insecurities and lies and revenge and all kinds of sick shit that takes you down a very dark path. So I would just not touch it. I would stay... <laughs> I would I would stay on the right side of things and if romantically things don't seem to be working the way you like I would focus on money. I would focus on the things that are going the way you want and that you can grow. Because if you get into insecurity based drama, anyone who threatens you, triggers you for whatever reason, you will be making yourself very transparent. One, whatever you're feeling is not going to come across. What people will pick up on is your insecurities. And two, just because of the way your astrology is set up, you are set up to take some huge hits to your reputation if you're not careful. Right? So on one hand, money gets easier. Okay? But on the other hand, <laughs> it can get a lot harder if you're not in control of your temper, if you're not in control of your words, if you're not in control of the exaggeration. And even if it seems completely unrelated, this is straight out of your astrology now. If you feel for whatever reason that you are isolated from that karma or you won't be touched by it because of whatever proxy you've put between you and that thing, June doesn't care. And if you remember back in your life, Gemini season has a tendency not to care. Gemini season is very much about intentionality and less so about actions. So one of the other things here that's troublesome is the accusatory tone. But the accusatory tone you have all month because you're figuring something out that's really heavy for you in terms of your childhood and how you see relationships and a lot of that is about assigning blame. Once you start assigning blame, once you start taking the blame off yourself and assigning it to others, you may start to sound a bit accusatory, right? Um, and that can drive people away. That can make people not want to help you. So just be careful there. Just be careful in how you're approaching these conversations that you absolutely should be having, right? Right? What happens is when you get into a space where you're accusing someone of something, especially out of insecurity, people can see that's why you're doing it, even though you think you're hiding it. And it scares them to the bone because they realize that if they ever made you feel insecure, you would come after them in the same way. So that's what I mean about taking huge hits to your reputation. This month, you can make people look at you differently from the way that you're acting. So either stay away from people or stay away from the fuck shit. So on the 4th, as Saturn goes retrograde, you're finally able to make sense of this kind of dread that you've been feeling. And what that is, is something from your childhood, you know, slapping you in the face. Something in your childhood is reflective of what's going on in your life right now. Okay, so for example, if you're surrounded by people with which you seem to have very unstable relationships... Uh, this is the month where it finally clicks for you that your unstable home life is, you know, being recreated all around you. You're making the same choices still, right? Or you didn't have a choice back then, but now you're consciously making the choice to remain in a situation like that. It's stuff like this, but it hits you hard. So just be prepared for that. The thing is, you can face it, right? You can face it and... Get the happily ever after and get away from the bullshit and have, you know, your time in the sun and let what needs to be revealed be revealed or you can deny it all because to face it all, you need to be honest, right? And deal with the consequences of your actions and not make it about your feelings, but if it's going to be about your feelings and only your feelings, well, that's a really easy way to get out of anything, you know? 
I know water signs hate to hear that, but if it's just about your feeling, I mean, I can feel any way I want. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't excuse my behavior. It doesn't excuse things that I've said or done. A feeling is just a feeling. A feeling is your business. It's nobody else's business. And so you are faced with a pretty serious dilemma in that way in June where you are asked to put your feelings to the side and not judge what you've done based on how you felt, but judge what you've done based on a more, let's say, black and white morality. And if that means that you find yourself culpable of something, that's also not a big deal. The whole point of this month for you is about accountability and about finding those sometimes fuzzy lines and reinforcing them with something real. You know, the exaggeration, the accusation, the revenge, the vengefulness, all of these things are on display, not because the universe wants to judge you, but because the universe wants to show you what's holding you back. And I think part of what can also get under Scorpio's skin about Gemini is that we're not loyal to some past version of me or you based on some contrived sentiment. We're loyal to evolving. That's it. But fixed signs can take that personally because to you, it can mean that we're more loyal to the theory or the abstract of something than to the thing. Well, you're right. You're right. <laughs> That's exactly it. Wouldn't hurt you to try it. Because whatever version of you you've been loyal to up until now, what hits you in the face after the 13th is that it's not paying you the dividends that it should. Adhering to that, let's say, cultural barrier, to that familial rule, to that whatever code you're living by, is it paying you the dividends that you want? Are you happy? Are you getting the things you want? Are you with the people you love? Are you being nourished? Are you being loved? And if the answer is no... You know, what the universe is going to throw up for you is all the different reasons, how all the different ways that you can get out of your own way, that you can have those things. But first that mirror gets turned on you before it gets turned on anybody else. And if you can't handle the reflection of that truth, you can get very stuck in June and just have an angry month where you hate everybody and you feel like everybody's out to get you. But none of that is true. This is a month that's showing you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and there is a way out. But if you take that personally, then you'll be sitting in the dark taking it personally for a month. And who wants to do that? Although that, like, for you guys is nothing, right? But who wants to do that in the summer? Hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Now... The thing about consequences and feelings. Yes, it's a harsh way to put it. But think about it. Let me, let me fix these cards and I'll come back. Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to the second part of your reading. So Mercury is direct as of 4 a.m. this morning, New York City time. So... What does that mean? Let's take another look at these cards. It occurred to me as I was talking to you yesterday, and perhaps this is why I abruptly ended it, that it doesn't really matter to a Scorpio what the impetus is for change. Change in general is something that you are averse to. You're not just risk averse, which sounds strange to people who don't know you. Like, oh no, Scorpios are take major risks. Yeah, but not the kind of risks that other people take. You are risk averse to the things that other people can very easily do without feeling like it's going to harm their self-image. You are very protective of your self-image. You are the one that is the most taken in by your self-image. And the, 
tendency to romanticize it. Thus, as I've mentioned before, that little dig at you guys. That's not really a dig. It's, it's all in jest. But that little dig of uh, you guys having the tattoos. You know, every Scorpio has a... Or most Scorpios have a Scorpio tattoo. Sorry, the retrograde is over and I'm starting to get my vision back. Now, so the reason I stopped talking was because I realized that the way that I was presenting the information for the retrograde, it's great. But as soon as the retrograde's over, you're out of that contemplative stage and now it just seems like I'm telling you to do something that's not you. But that's exactly the point. June is showing you that certain beliefs that you hold and certain ways that you go about expressing yourself are not an inherent part of your personality. They're part of a thought process that's holding you back. Now, when you have an overinflated sense of self, it's very difficult to evolve because you can't see where there's any room for improvement. So the number one thing you're tackling as of June 3rd, now that the month, the season is actually going, the thing that you're tackling is how do I get myself to a place where I believe that I'm standing in my way and that I need to get out of my way? Because until you see it, until you can see actual proof in your life that the way you're thinking about things is harming you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, and, and I understand why, because you have this very deep held sense of who you are and you don't want anyone messing with that. The problem is that when you're that attached to the identity, to the programming, whatever it is, that mix of things that makes you who you are, when you're overly attached to that, there's just no room for growth because, you know, your self-love is telling you all the time that you're perfect and you don't need to change anything and everybody else needs to change. But in June, it hits you like a bus, you know, that no, there are certain things that you are doing to you. Nobody's doing them to you. And I think that's the way that most of you get the message in June is that someone you have perhaps been blaming throws it back on you or everyone around you who's watching you do it is like, no, yeah, this is kind of your own fault. And it's when you have that moment of this is kind of your own fault or this is your thinking has brought you here that you start to realize how intensely you're attached to that part of you. And you start to see in a very awkward and comfortable way how adhering to, blindly adhering to a certain loyalty, a certain belief is just, it's at your expense. And especially if this loyalty is completely misguided and it's being offered to someone because you just need to offer it to someone. That's the other thing, the dirty little secret about Scorpios that comes out in June is that sometimes that attachment, that adherence, that loyalty isn't because you feel something. It's because you just need somebody to attach to. It's very uncomfortable because it's hitting at the core of who you are and what you pride about yourself, but it's showing you the underside of that, the underbelly of that belief and what it can do to you in the long run. What it can do to you in the long run is attach you to people who are super, super, super bad for you. Okay, but this need to be attached, this need to be loyal, this need to fan out, it can get on top of you. Now, I know this offends you. I know there's a part of you that's like, I'm not like that. I'm Think back in your life at those times where you were blindly trusting, blindly listening, blindly doing whatever. Okay, and think about how it worked out for you. Now think about whether or not you're doing that again. As the water comes to a boil. That's really, that's really what this comes down to, is that you've been here before, but the experience didn't teach you. So now, in practical terms, Gemini season is like, you got 20 days for me to make you understand this, and it's only going to make you stronger, better, 
more authentic. And if what you're worried about is loyalty, it will make you more loyal because it's going to make you see where you wrongfully have put your trust, where you should be putting your trust and what that should be based on, not out of some obligation, not out of some need or compulsion, but because you really want to. For me, June for Scorpios is like someone like waving their hands, you know, by the side of the road trying to get you to stop because you can't see that you're driving with a flat tire, but everybody else can. And they're just like, can you stop? Because you're going to you're going to kill the rest of us on the road when this tire falls off. We're trying to get you to get off the road so you can fix the tire. Now, you can get mad at people who are waving you off the road. You can deny that the tire is flat. You can make excuses, but if you keep going down that road, you know what's going to happen to that tire. There's nothing you can do. Being mad isn't going to fix the tire. Being annoyed, being mean isn't going to fix the tire. Talking about people isn't going to fix the tire. You see what I'm saying? Sabotaging somebody else is not going to fix the tire. What needs to be looked at is the fundamentals of what you do when you go all in on something. And of course, the logic there is if I'm all in on something, I'm just assuming that the other person is all in too because that's how things work. But that's not how things work. That's not how things work. And you've been here before. You know exactly that that's not how things work. No, but this time it's like that. No, it's not. If you could just take all that inherence and all that loyalty and all that stubbornness and just give it to yourself and believe in yourself that blindly, That's all Gemini season wants you to do is take all that passion, all that concentrated fury and give it to yourself as energy. Believe in yourself. Adhere to, be loyal to yourself. Because what it's going to do, it's going to take away the major source of your issues. When you're misinformed, when you're repping the wrong team, when you're crying and screaming at the top of your lungs for somebody else or about someone else, The thing that's glaring and obvious to everybody around you is that you're not even a part of this equation. Why are you taking up arms and taking up a fight that has nothing to do with you? Meanwhile, it's clear as day to everybody around you that you're doing it to avoid something that's actually going on with you. And unfortunately or fortunately, Gemini season is not one to let it go. We've talked many times about the contentious relationship that Gemini and Scorpio have. And I'll tell you again, it's because we're not afraid to tell you what's going on. Yes, holding a clean mirror up to you is terrifying because there's every chance that you're going to break right through that mirror and sting us. But we have the anti-venom. The anti-venom is just logic. It's analysis. We can logic our way out of your venom. So we're not afraid of it right? It's this elemental terrifying thing that you can put into the hearts of people and really hurt them. But we can logic our way out of this. But you can't venom and feel intense feel your way out of our logic. You can't because if it's true, it's true, right? And it's not like Gemini season is asking you to do something that's bad for you. It may seem, it may feel like it's bad for you, But being loyal to yourself and putting yourself first and not fighting other people's battles and not taking on other people's shit is not a bad thing. Just because it may insult certain sensibilities that you have, well, you need to look at those sensibilities then and see who you're putting before yourself. Because if you're putting anyone before yourself, except your ideals and your beliefs, you're doing it wrong. But nobody wants to tell you. And that to me seems really lonely. Whenever I meet Scorpios who are mean, vindictive, talk about people in front of them, make fun of people to their faces and think nobody notices. There's like this video going around of Kendall Jenner totally shading Addison Rae for no reason and just making fun of her. Whenever I see Scorpios do this, I'm like, <laughs> like there's, there's no reason to do that and all it's doing is exposing that you don't feel good about you so whenever y'all get into that space and someone is like hey this is saying a lot more about you than you want it to i mean if the fear is getting exposed then understand that what you're doing right now is exposing yourself that's what gemini want gemini season wants to stop you from 
Even if you feel a certain type of way, you don't need to be this transparent unknowingly, right? So whatever you're saying, whatever you're doing, you think that's what's coming across when all that's really coming across is a very powerful subtext because everyone's in Gemini season, not just you. We're not looking at what people are saying and doing. We're looking at what it's indicative of. We're looking for what's underneath. And what's underneath someone bullying someone five years younger than them that has nothing to do with them? Pure insecurity. Pure insecurity. Now, in that moment, did Kendall get off on making fun of her to her face on national TV? Yeah, she did. But in the long run, that was like a five-second thing. But now it's become canonized in internet history as just a moment of petty hate. Now, what does that mean for her? That's fucking embarrassing as shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is why Gemini season is rough, but it's also super soft because we're only telling you the truth so you can not do that. So you can keep your secrets, so you can keep your mystery, so so people will value you for the right reasons. Right, Because there is so much to value, Scorpio, but it gets lost (laughs) with these little petty things and this lack of self-awareness and unknowingness of how transparent you can be. Like It gets lost, and we want to find it. (laughs) I love you. Getting into the center right now. 